Final question, should we be concerned about consuming beef containing the spike protein? Consuming beef containing the spike protein. I think this is responsive to the possibility of mRNA vaccines in beef. Yeah. In which a case, as opposed to COVID spike protein has gotten into beef some other way. Yeah. Yeah. In which case, I will say, I will say, as, as a repetition of something I've said many times, and I will probably have to say again, spike protein is a real problem. However. It's not where you want to focus if the question is about mRNA vaccination. mRNA vaccination is a problem for a different reason. And if you took the spike protein out of it, it would still be dangerous, irrespective of what you swapped in. And uh, if what this is in reference to is uh, cattle being vaccinated with new mRNA platform vaccines, there's no reason to expect that spike protein is inherently in those. You've yep. got the mRNA platform problem, but you don't have the spike protein problem. Exactly. Right. Now, they could vaccinate them. I, I don't know. I mean, these people are crazy. I don't know what they're going to vaccinate for what and why, because it really probably has very little to do with the health of livestock and a lot to do with selling vaccines. So who knows? Maybe they'll vaccinate them for COVID and there'll be some spike. In which case, is it good for you? No. Is it dealt with in cooking? Probably. Is it dealt with in cooking better if you cook hotter rather than eating stuff rare? Yes. Um, yeah. It's, I'm, we've talked about this before, but it's unfortunately an argument for well-done meat, which a lot of us don't prefer. Yeah, not necessarily well done. It's, it's an argument that uh, rare is a special problem because rare is cool enough that it can preserve something like this in its original form. And so, and spike protein doesn't have any particularly special properties in being particularly resistant to denaturing with heat, right? Like it, it should, it should unfold and become a non-problem with a certain amount of heat, just like any others, any other proteins, as far as we know. There's, let's put it this way: heat will certainly denature it. How much heat is something is an empirical question. I'd love somebody to answer, yeah. but let's put it this way: personally, am I worried if somebody vaccinates a cow? for COVID and the cow produces spike protein? Am I worried about ingesting the spike protein in the food? A little, but not that much. What I'm really worried about is their pseudouridine stabilized mRNAs, which will then transfect my cells, right? That's the danger. Yeah, because uh, pseudouridine, Pseudouridine what mRNAs? Transfect, stabilized. Stabilized. Yeah. Pseudouridine stabilized mRNAs, being mRNAs and not protein, aren't going to denature in heat. Like, I mean, you could you could blast them with enough heat to render them not recognizable, but... You could break um, them apart. But, but uh, I don't... Again, it's an empirical question that I don't even know if it's been asked, much less would I know where to find the answer. Like, how much heat do you need? to get rid of that platform from continuing to act like a factory and transfecting your own cells. Well, I think we can actually, we can take a pretty solid uh, educated guess. All right. Because denaturing is a matter of causing the hydrogen bonds that cause a protein to fold into a particular conformation to break apart. So very often you can right, denature- but that's over in spike protein land we're talking about. I know. Okay. So if we're talking about a protein, Denaturing it with heat can cause it to unfold and not function in the way it would function, and then cooling it can cause it to reform or not reform, depending upon the particular protein and the conditions. In the case of mRNA of any kind, its function is not in the folding, right? Its function is in the sequence, which then gets read by a ribosome so the point is you're not breaking hydrogen bonds in some meaningful way. It's the covalent bonds that make up the string of nucleotides. And, and covalent bonds are more robust. Yeah. They're so gonna... it's going to take more heat. Right. And that's so that's just that's just a relative answer, but it does seem like a pretty strong relative it's answer. It's going strong... to take, take more to disable the little mRNA factory that you might be taking on than it will to disable, to, to render the spike protein unrecognizable as a spike protein. Correct. And that's before you get to the issue of it being pseudouridine stabilized. 
at right. which point it becomes yeah, I don't know a how to add durable that in, molecule. Yeah. yeah. So anyway. Uh, how dare they? These people suck. They really do. The whole idea that they would be playing with this concept with respect to food is insane. And you said you have another planet for them. Uh, I don't also even... promise that it's not ready yet, but we can send them anyway. Here's the thing. Um, respect to the people <laughs> who would contemplate putting pseudouridine stabilized mRNA so-called vaccines into things that people are then going to eat. Mm. What I have for them is the location that may at some point in the future have a planet and I would like to send them there now. Mm. And then should a planet arise, they're welcome to make of it what they will. Here, I can sweeten the deal for them. Nice. Yeah. You can have the cookies that Brett is going to bake as soon as this broadcast is over. It can tide you, you can over. Take them, you can take them with you. Until the planet arrives, you'll have all the cookies we've made during this broadcast. There's no we. All the cookies I've made during, <laughs> during this broadcast. <laughs> yep, there's no we. Right, no, this is, there's no division of labor here. All of these thought cookies were thought made by thought me during this broadcast while we were doing other things. Mm -hmm. Yep, mm -hmm. that's true. Mm -hmm.